Okay, Robert is recording, so um, I think what I'll do is I'll just hand over to Claire just now uh, and just let you know that my colleague Alan has been working like a Trojan horse over the past couple of days trying to get the wheel ready and we finally got it ready for, for today and Claire is going to demonstrate it. So no one's seen this before, it's all new, is that right Claire? It is yeah. brand new, okay, brand new today. Brand new. Okay, yeah. right, so great stuff. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Claire, okay, you can take us away. Do you want me to share the screen straight away? Yeah. Yes, thanks. Okay, yeah, so I'll just quickly screen. share it through your screen so you can see um, Claire's, Claire's iPad. Yeah, we should just oh. say massive thanks to Alan, who's done all the really incredibly fiddly desktop publishing bits of making this wheel and getting it ready in time uh, for you all to have a look at this webinar today. So, can, that's that my screen share yeah, now? Yeah, that's your okay. screen Great. share now, and I'll just make adjustments so I can get rid of all the backgrounds. Okay. Okay, right. Take right. it away, Claire. Good to go. So, uh, nice to see you all here this afternoon. We're going to have a look at, um, as Craig said, our brand new app wheel for learners with complex needs. Uh, we're going to start this afternoon by having a look at where you can get it from. We're going to have a look at some of the different features and information that are on the app wheel. We'll have a think about the categories and how we've divided the various different apps up. Um, and hopefully we'll have time just towards the end to have a look at a couple of the different apps that are on the wheel. So first things first, the most important thing is to know uh, where you can find it from. So you'll see on the screen here that I've got the Call Scotland homepage up and I'm going to show you where you would go if you want to download a copy of the app wheel for yourself. So along the um, top section of the screen, right next to where the home button is, the black line that says about services, information, training, downloads, contact and blog. I'm going to tap on downloads because I want to download a copy of the app wheel. And that's going to take me to a page that has lots of different links for lots of different um, bits of information that we have available at call. But the app wheel, as some of you may know if you've seen our other app wheels, is a poster. So I'm going to tap on where it says posters and leaflets and it's going to bring up an alphabetical list of all the various posters and leaflets that are available from Call Scotland. So I'm going to scroll down and you'll see there's a couple of our other app wheels there. That's for Android apps for using um, with those devices. But this particular wheel is an iPad app. It's all iOS apps. And you'll see that this is where our iPad app wheels all are. I'm sure lots of you have seen the iPad apps for complex communication support needs poster, which we have along with the original one, the iPad apps for learners with dyslexia and the more recent iPad apps for learners with dyscalculia and numeracy difficulties. But just there to the left of the dyscalculia app is a brand new app wheel, which is all in various shades of yellow. And that's our iPad apps for learners with complex so presumably additional support needs. somebody could just go to the site just now um, and just download it and just work through it as you're, as you're yes, showing here. Yes, exactly. Right. So they're there. It's there now. So you can do this in real time as well if you want to. I've just tapped on it and it's taken me to the information page. Um, and we're just kind of highlighting a couple of bits of information about the app wheel in the text that's there. Uh, a couple of things maybe mentioning what that's worth mentioning to you that, that are written down there is that there are some apps on this wheel that are suitable, more suitable for primary aged learners, some that are more suitable for secondary aged learners, and some that would be um, suitable for both primary and secondary. And also, and it's ov obviously, it's worth saying as well, it is by no means a comprehensive list. And there are thousands and thousands of apps available. We've just tried to select ones that we think might be most useful to you for teaching particular skills. So that's all the introductory bit about the app wheel. I'm going to tap on the red download and I'm going to open up a copy of the app wheel and I'm going to scroll immediately past the actual wheel itself. And I just want to um, highlight to you the information that's here at the bottom because there's a couple of things that might be useful for you um, just to consider. You'll see that there's four boxes, a uh, red and yellow color right at the bottom. And that yellow box on the left hand side um, is just kind of highlighting that thing that we always need to think about, 
when we're considering using um, an iPad and using apps with learners who've got complex needs. It's thinking about why we're doing it. What's the purpose? What skills are we trying to teach? And you'll see that there's a link just at the end of that paragraph. Um, it's just in a blue color, a small hyperlink. And if I tap on that, it's going to take you to the call website to some more information about using technology with learners who have got complex needs. There's a huge amount of info there, lots of links, lots of ideas and things to consider and um, links to other websites as well. So that's that's one thing just to highlight in the wheel. On the opposite side, so on the right hand side at the bottom, also in the yellow box again, just mentioning that guided access is a tool that you may well want to make use of when you're thinking about introducing using apps um, to a learner who has complex needs. So that using guided access means that you can essentially disable the home button. That's one of the features of it. And you can lock that app in. So when you're using it with a particular learner, it helps just to keep focused on that one thing. So there's a link at the end of that text there that takes you to some information that tells you how how you would do that. There's also um, in the red box on the left hand side at the very bottom a small key and um, you'll see that it says that some apps um, have been designed to use with a switch they've got that built in so that's might be some learners they're not going to use their hands they're not going to use their fingers on the iPad screen they might want to use an access switch that's connected to the iPad through a switch interface box, uh, a special switch interface box for an iPad. So if those apps are on the wheel, they have got a red border around them. So let's have a look at what that looks like. If we scroll up to um, the top half of the wheel, uh, you'll see that to the left hand side of the screen in the cognition section, there is a series of apps um, called um, touch apps, touch access apps, and they are sight and sounds apps and they've all got red borders around them. That means that they are all, um, all designed to work with a switch. And you'll, you'll see that there's quite a few apps in the wheel that have that feature in them. Going back down to the key again, um, there are apps which have a blue border. Now there's only two or three of these in the wheel. Uh, I'm going to go back up again, and if you look at that same area of the wheel, you'll see that there's two black and white icon apps, um, Big Bang Pictures and Big Bang Patterns. They've both got blue borders around them, and there's another one in the target and touch section of the wheel further over called Tap and See Now. Those blue bordered apps are particularly suitable for learners who have got a cortical visual impairment or some kind of visual impairment because of the way that they display images in a really high contrast way. So that's just other things um, to consider when you're thinking about deciding which apps to use. Also useful to know um, and something it's maybe easy to forget if you're used to seeing the app wheels just as a printed poster in the blue box here it tells us that there's some information um, behind all of the icons that are on the app wheel. So if you click them when you're on the electronic version, it will take you straight to the UK App Store. So let me just show you what that looks like. I've got the app wheel here and I'm going to tap on the sensory light box app icon, which is in cognition and the cause and effect side of it in touch and drag. It's got a little kind of um, light light area in the middle. I'm going to tap on it and it's going to take me straight to the UK App Store and that will allow, to, allow me to see if it's one that I haven't already purchased, how much it is or if it's a free app. It will also give me a little bit more information about the apps as well. So for example, for this one, the cause and effect um, light box, it gives you a little video demonstration of it as well. So that's a really useful feature if you're accessing the app wheel um, online electronically, you can click on any of the icons in the app wheel and it will take you straight to the UK app store. So you can find out more about them and you can get them downloaded and or purchased to your iPad if you want. So that's the information at the bottom, but let's now have a look at the actual wheel itself and have a look at how we've divided, um, divided it all up into the categories. And um, we're going to have a look at how we've arranged them 
um, essentially. So you'll see that there's a lot of apps that are probably quite familiar to you and maybe some, maybe a couple which are new. We've arranged all of the apps into categories in order to help you plan exactly how and when you want to use them. So if you have a look at the bright yellow outer layer of the app wheel, which has got the red writing on it, you'll see that the broad general categories are cognition, and I'm going to move round in a clockwise direction, down to emergent numeracy, emergent literacy, communication, creativity, and self-regulation. But there's a further subdivision of those categories in the next layer down. So in the slightly lighter uh, light yellow that's underneath there, you'll see that cognition has been divided into three areas. The borders of the cognition section of the wheel are the red lines, and you'll see that we've got a cause and effect section, a problem solving section, and a choice making section. And then there's further subdivisions. Um, emergent literacy and emergent numeracy are just all in the one category for each of those areas. But within communication, there are um, there's a highlight there of some apps which might be useful if you're thinking about early interaction. So all of the, the three apps that are in that area, that subcategory are all apps which are sound activated. So it's the sort of apps that you might want to think about using if you were working with a learner who was at that early vocalization stage and you were wanting to encourage them to vocalize so that something happens on the screen of the iPad. If we move along to creativity, you'll see that we've divided them into music, art and multimedia. And then the final section there, self-regulation is divided into relaxation, emotions and schedules. So there's lots of different sections and categories um, within there. You'll also notice as well, and this is just in the cognition section of the app wheel, that we have given further um, information about how a learner might access these individual apps. So you'll see that they've been divided into further categories with the labels touch, touch and drag, pinch, drag, target and touch and timing. So that's to really help you think about how your learner is going to interact with the apps. So to give you an example, within the touch category, all of those apps are apps that you would use if you were wanting to teach and consolidate cause and effect. So if you touch the screen, something happens, whether that's just an effect, whether it's sound or, or whether it's both. Whereas in the touch and drag section, which is just the next bit over, something happens when you just touch the screen in those. But if you then drag your finger or drag your hand over the screen, you get a further effect. The pinch category, so that's when we're thinking about using that pinch gesture to make things bigger and smaller. That's a useful skill if you're going to go on to be using the iPad for other things. Cosmic Tops, a really nice example of an app that um, helps you to learn that. And then over in the problem section, um, sorry, the problem solving section of cognition, we've got, we've got drag again, but this time the dragging that you're having to do in these apps, there's a certain amount of problem solving that comes into it because you have to work out exactly where on the screen you drag in order to make something happen. You see there's also target and touch and timing in there as well. And it's, it's worth just saying actually and kind of flagging up um, the next webinar that we've got in a couple of weeks time, Ian Bean's going to be here and he's going to be talking about um, some resources that he has called SENICT, his software resources, and he's got some fantastic materials in there for a progression of teaching these physical access skills for touch access and it's something that might be really useful and um, to use alongside the app wheel if you're thinking about introducing it with a particular learner so that's that's the app wheel um it's wor worth also saying as well just bear in mind that we do quite regularly update these app wheels so at some stage in the future we will be updating it some of the apps may change 
Sometimes when Apple updates their operating system, apps are no longer updated by the developer and we can't get access to them anymore. Um, so there may be changes to it. And that's maybe worth thinking about if you've got old printed copies of other Call Scotland app wheels, have a look and make sure that you've got the, the most up-to-date version. But this is, this is the, in fact, the only <laughs> and most up-to-date version of this app wheel in um, version 1.0. So let's have a wee look at a couple of the apps um, that are on, on the app wheel. We're, we're going to go back up to Cognition again um, in the cause and effect section. Um, there, th these are the apps that are all uh, bordered with the red because they've all got access um, to switches built in with them. The SNS, the sights and sounds, there's quite a few of them there. But let's have a look at the sights and sounds popcorn app. This is a nice example of an app that has lots of different kinds of switch and touch access built into it. So I'm going to bring it up on the screen and we'll have a wee look. So it's, it's very simple. Um, it uses this black dark screen and the image that you can see there of the popcorn will build up with accompanying music um, depending on how you set the interactions with the screen. So I've just tapped on settings in the middle there. And you can see that you can have a variety of sounds that come inbuilt with the app. But if we look at where it says mode, there are three different options. So this is the kind of information that we see on PowerLink boxes. That's the boxes that you can plug into the mains and that allows you to use electrical items with a switch. It gives you that switch access option. If I were to tap on momentary, so momentary means press and hold the switch to play and release to stop. And that's exactly the same with touch as well. So you can use this app with touch and with a switch. This is the sort of mode that would be good to think about using if someone was just learning to use cause and effect, learning to understand what it is. So I've, I've got that highlighted momentary, press and hold the switch to play, release to stop. I'm going to close down the screen with the little cross on the top left hand side and I'm going to touch the popcorn to start. Touch to play. There's a prompt. It's a switch prompt, but you can use your finger as well um, or your hand. And I'm going to put my hand on the screen and Touch you'll see what happens. Now I'm going to take my hand away and it stops. So that's it on momentary. As soon as my hand is away, something stops. So if I close that out and go back to settings again, this time I could put it on latching. So this is an access method that might be quite nice. You can have a lot of fun with this method, turning things on and off together. So this time, if I tap the screen or I press the switch, it's going to um, start. And if I press it again, it's going to stop. So I'm going to go back in again. Touch to play. So I'm going to tap. And that will just keep building and building and building. Now I'm going to tap to stop. And it goes off. So that's the momentary and the latch setting. And then finally, there's the time setting. So I can decide how long I want the screen to play the animation for and play the sound for. So you've got lots of options there. You could have it going for a long time. You could have it, I'm going to put it right down to two so you can see. So this time, if I tap the screen, it's going to play for two seconds and stop. And in order to get it to do anything else again, I will have to press Touch to play. Press the screen, or if I had a switch connected to my iPad, use the iPad. So it's stopped, and if I want it to go again. So that's sights and sounds, popcorn. That's a nice example of the different um, access methods that quite a few of these apps have got built into them. I think, have we got time for just yeah, one more yeah, sure. app, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So we're going to, I'm going to go back to the wheel and show you where this one is. That's a cause and effect one. So we're going to move over to the right hand side in a clockwise direction to emergent numeracy. And right on the outside there um, of the wheel is one called Little Digits. This is a really nice app um, for using to teach about one-to-one -one correspondence in numeracy. It uses um, the multi-touch function in an iPad. Okay, so first thing I would say is um, when, when you open this app up, 
The top right hand screen is where the languages section is. If I tap on this, just want to highlight something. The default, <coughs> excuse me, the default for this app is English US, but there is a English UK setting. So that just means the, per the this person speaking is going to have um, a British accent. The speaker icon, which is right at the very bottom under where it says Chinese, allows you to record your own um, voice. So you could actually have yourself speaking. In order to do that, you would just go up to the top right hand side where the blue speaker icon is, and it will take you to a page where you have to record, where you record yourself saying zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. So that's an option as well, but we're going to put it on English UK and go home. And I'm going to take it into just the sort of initial exploratory phase and a screen is going to come up. I won't have any fingers on the screen at all. Zero. So there are zero fingers on the screen at the minute. But now if I put one finger on the screen, one, you'll see that a little dot has come up where my finger is. I'm moving it around and you can see me moving it around. I'm now going to put two fingers on the screen. Two. Three. Three. Take them off. Zero. Four. It's zero, really nice. Five, it recognises your finger touches. Seven. And will tell you zero, how two, many you have. So that's the zero, kind of basic feature of it. But what's also quite nice is it's got a um, question feature. So if I go home to the home page again. We'll show you. One. Now it's asking me to put one finger on the screen. One. So I have, and the number one gets very excited. Three. So if I do it wrongly this time, I'm going to put four fingers on the screen. Four. You get a sad four, and you get a sad one. number until you get the correct one. Three. So that's a really nice app one. Um, to use. There's, there's addition and subtraction features on it as well, but I think if we're thinking about that kind of emergent numeracy and just understanding um, the representation of number, th those two aspects are really handy. Mm, that's great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great that you can record your own voice, isn't it? Yeah. P pretty other apps aren't like that. So. I know. It would yeah. be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. So will I uh, return back to the homepage? Yes, yes I think okay. that is us. Yep. Right, okay. I'll just... Um... So we'll stop sharing the screen. Yep. Switch this off. Okay, we're back. Then just be a second just to get it up. And we'll stop sharing. We should be back to the next page. Okay, so if you have any uh, any questions for Claire, please pop them into the uh, chat pane at the bottom. How much was that, that app, for example, the one that we just looked at? I think it's two or three pounds yeah. around Craig the Little Digits and um, none of the apps are particularly expensive mm -hmm. I would say um, they're all you know just sort of there's a lot 99p there's quite a few really nice free ones on there yeah. like the light effect oh, sound yes. box okay. um, well that's a low cost one but sounding boards on there and that's that's entirely free yeah um, so, does anyone have any questions for Claire at all? Feel free just to pop them in. Um, thanks for that, Claire. That was really interesting. And thanks, Alan, as well. For uh, Actually, last Friday night, I left work and Alan was sitting at his computer doing the wheel. And when I came in Monday morning, he was still sitting there. I don't think he so went home. I think he was there the whole weekend <laughs> doing doing that. <laughs> Two ninety nine. I've just double checked for, for the little one. digits okay, one. Thanks. Yeah. It's worth saying, actually, um, I know we've got someone from the States listening. Um, so all the links on the wheel are to the UK app store, mm -hmm. but you can replace mm -hmm. the UK for, I think, is it US in oh, yeah, the, in so the, the you know, URL where it says GB, to get to the... You just change GB to, yeah, the, to, to US. To yeah, US, yeah. to be able to access them for the right country. Yeah, Debbie's saying about the, 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 the category, that's really interesting because I've seen the app and I didn't realise how much thought had gone into the various aspects of, of, of the app, yeah. Alan's saying he did go home. He did so go home. Good. Yeah, he probably, <laughs> probably had a copy of it at home and worked on his computer at home as well. <laughs> um, 
Okay, that's great, thanks. So, uh, are there any apps you can recommend for developing listening skills in children with a hearing loss? Asked Katie. Hmm. That's a really interesting question. Um, I wonder if something that's going to give you a connection to what's on the screen would be useful. So I'm thinking of mm. things like Sounding Board, um, the app where you can record a communication mm -hmm. message onto individual cells on the screen. So that can be your own voice or it can be the voice that comes with the app. And that way you can link what's being spoken to a symbol, to, mm -hmm. to a visual prompt. So I'm thinking um, maybe Katie, the book bug, um, picture book prize, symbol resources, we've got the sounding mm. board boards. I don't know if we're able to put yeah. a link up to that, Craig, are we? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that just now. Just yeah. give me a second, I'll, I'll get the link. So for, we'll show uh, you, Katie, where that is. Um, so just go to... And I'll do Books for All. And, um, so we'll have a wee look. I see there's another um, question there from Sona. Are there any apps that are related to storytelling for children with sight impairments? Another really good question, which we might need to think about, Sona, and come back uh -huh. to you on. Yeah. Yeah. And another one about speaking into and words translating to text, so a dictation app. Gosh, these are really good questions. Yeah. Um, so that's the chords. Um, so if we go to Symbols for sim All yeah. website. On oh, the Symbols for All. Yeah, okay. we'll get them. That's probably the easiest place to get them. Yeah. Symbolsforall.org.uk. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Um, um, and we'll show you where you can get them from. Thanks, Linda. That's a really good suggestion there um, for di the dictation app, just using Siri um, and using that built in within the iPad. That's that's the great thing about iPads, isn't it? You don't always need the app. They've yeah. got a lot of accessibility functions yeah. built into them. And thanks to uh, Kathleen and David as well for the kind comments and Linda as well. Thank you. Okay, I think if there are no more comments or questions, we will finish up, and uh, this will be on the uh, as an archive, ready hopefully tomorrow sometime. Um, Claire saying we have learners who can't oh, can't cope that well with Siri, but thanks. Okay, that's yeah. yeah <laughs> voice typing is very good as well. Yeah, it's a great it's a great um, well I think one of the most powerful voice recognition programs there is. There isn't okay, a thanks for that, David. Anymore. It's, no, it's kind of been superseded no. yeah. now with Siri. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks everyone. We'll just close the session. Thanks to Claire. Thanks, Claire. Thank thanks you. to Alan and everyone. And thanks to everyone for joining. And uh, great. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.